Aerodacia, Rizal, Godfrey, A. Heather, Lestra, Casper, Aquila, good night. Josh Splash. Ooh. I'm good. The place is hot. So hot. Turn up my fan a little bit. Good evening. Everybody come in. Siobhan. Michelle. CD. Raphael, Ryan, bless. Y'all miss me like I miss y'all? Azani, Sister Ulet. Emily, Anita, Sherry Sherry, Oh, tongues, tongues. <laughs> oh, man, it's really hard. Kelisa. David, what's going on, bro? Tisani. Come on, man, we having Bible study tonight. Shemin. Charity. Hey, yo, Nikita. Get the crew, bring the crew in. Bring the crew in, we're starting in like two minutes, three minutes. Bring the crew in, invite the Facebook family, the Bible study family. Yeah man, I miss you too, I miss you all guys. <laughs> so bad. But this has been very restful for me. <laughs> so, but it's a blessing to be able to come back and do Bible study and to continue it. <laughs> Um, Betty yet Alexandra, Betty at Albany, New York. Yeah, rep, where you from? Let me see where you guys are from tonight. Throw up your country flag. Hey, Brandy. Yeah, I was so restful. I am absolutely enjoying being at home. Today ends my quarantine, so I could go, could go about the place now. Uh, but as a home bird, so I like being at home too. <laughs> she said, she said, nice to see you coming up here. Guys <laughs> are wondering what, what took me so long to start back this. You, probably think doing this is effortless it's not effortless it takes time and I had to come back home and get back into the groove of things well most of them settle in take care of my responsibilities and now the Lord has afforded me to do this bring them in yeah Guyana in the house <laughs> hey Casey Belgium it's no place like home Mosquitoes miss me, and so they're showing love and appreciation for me being back. Karina! Yeah, you're here. As usual, I will try to be short. You know. Thank you, Annette. <laughs> I don't know what will happen tonight, but I, I'm super excited. Super, super excited. Ah! Being back home in Guyana has really for this one week has shown me why I could not be in Guyana for the past three months. The, the atmosphere is here in Guyana. For those of you who live in Guyana know that the atmosphere in Guyana is very, it's very <laughs> troublesome for want of a better word. Um, it takes a lot to focus with everything that's going on in Guyana right now. Now I realize why the Lord had to pull me out so that he could get me to do what he wanted me to do because in this atmosphere, I, I, 
And you know what? Coincidentally, and not so coincidentally, maybe prophetically, um, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. We're in the book of Genesis 11 and 12. And it happened wrong a, a couple different places, but sometimes in order for you to do what God has for you to do, He has to remove you from where you are and take you somewhere else because His plans for your life and through your life, they will not be as effective and they would not have the weight and the accomplishment if you stayed in the place where you were. So, man, yeah, I had to focus if I was going to do what God had me do. Um, it couldn't be done in Guyana. It could, well, at least it could not start in Guyana. I, I guarantee you I'd be running about this place until they shut down and, and call the curfew. You ought to be all about <laughs> God had to pull you out and bring you back. But I'm so very, very grateful. Thank you guys, man. You guys have been a support. Somebody asked me yesterday. Um, somebody asked me yesterday what 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 was I most happy for? Um, what I learned in COVID, right? I couldn't give a I couldn't give an answer back then, but I really I can say it now that I really really learned the power of prayer, being by yourself. Um, and I don't, I don't mean like prayer because you had nothing else to do and your back's against the wall. My back was not against the wall when I was out there in Bermuda and in New York because I had been in New York for like a whole week before I came home and did lives from New York. I just didn't announce that I was in New York because I didn't, want, I didn't want people to know I was in New York. I didn't want to be running all about the place. I just wanted to stay put, lay low until I got a flight to come home. But while I was out there, my back was not against the wall. I wasn't crying or anything. But God pa paused me long enough for me to really realize the power of prayer. There's nothing like prayer. It is impossible for a praying person to walk out of the closet and not be powerful after. And when I say, and I, when I say be powerful after prayer, I don't mean walk out and start prophesying to people and, and pointing fingers and, and raising dead bodies and, and all of that kind of stuff. Prayer, it builds you up. And it eliminates confusion. It eliminates anxiety. It eliminates and it opens your eyes. God gives you knowledge in prayer. That's why you are not flustered when other people are flustered because you get to hear God speak. You spend time with him. You communicate with him. And God is able to open up your eyes to see things that other people can't see. So when everybody's running helter skelter and everybody's being tossed by every wind, you have peace in your soul. That is what prayer does. It draws God closer to you. It draws you closer to God. And there's this communion where you know things are going to be all right even regardless of what you're seeing around And you will know a lot of people in the life, they're flustered. But listen, man, it is a, it's a, it's a really, really bad thing. And this, is what, and this is what those who know about information in the world, this is what they do. They keep you under their control by feeding you what they want to feed you. And by trying to control the narrative of what you hear and what you see and what you feel. And for people who are not tapped into a higher source, who are not getting information from a higher source, who are not getting peace and assurance from a higher source, they are, they are all caught up in the thick of things of everything that's happening around the world. But you see, when you hide yourself in prayer, that's what David said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. When you seek the face of God and God starts to speak to your spirit, you, you get so calm. <laughs> you pray and you learn how to pray rightly. You learn to speak and you learn to speak right. You learn when to shut up. And it gives you this peace. Your energy is fixed. When you come out to prayer, you come out like a lion. Man. I put together a video of my whole trip back from, from New York and Bermuda Street here. Oh, you flustered? Just stay on the live tonight. Prayer is everything. Prayer is everything, man. It's everything. God literally taught me why Jesus always ran back to him to spend time with the Father. Man. It refreshes your spirit. It gives you a boldness. It puts you at a high advantage and a high pinnacle where you can see further than other people. Yeah. So let's pray tonight as we start. Man, I'm so excited. So excited. So excited. I'm back home with my wife. Back home with family, back home with friends. Let's pray tonight. Share the live. 
Invite your people, bring them on tonight. Roar! <laughs> Father, you're awesome and we big you up. We bless your name. There's absolutely nobody like you. Lion of the tribe of Judah. King, conqueror, carpenter. <laughs> You are the first and the last. You're everything in between. You're Alpha and Omega. And we are connected to you. And so, Father, we give you the honor, the glory. We rise to bless your name. Thank you for this space that you have before time created for us to come and to meet. God, it's not physical, but your presence is within. And your presence is among us. Your presence is above us. Your presence is flowing through us, God. Your very kingship is here tonight. And we honor you and we magnify you tonight. And for every person that's on this live, every person that's coming on this live, every person that's going to check in and going to be blessed for the five minutes, ten minutes, the entire time that they're on this live. Father, we give the honor and the glory to you already. We anticipate your presence. We anticipate your voice. We anticipate you speaking tonight, Father. Father, we thank you, God, for everything that you did for us throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the season, everything that you're teaching us, God. Father, we suck it up like a sponge, God. We want to be so filled of you and nothing else, God. Everything that is unlike you, that we will throw it out so that we can enlarge our capacities for you, God. For your word, the appetite for your word, the appetite for prayer, the appetite for spending time just listening to you, God. You've been teaching us to wait, teaching us to listen, teaching us to pray, God, teaching us to intercede, God, teaching us to understand your word, teaching us to study, to show ourselves approved, not being ashamed, rightly dividing your word of truth. God, Father, you have dismantled false truths. You have dismantled lies. You've established new truths in our hearts, and we're just grateful, Father, for everything that you're doing, God. It's bigger than Sammy. It's bigger than the people on this live. It's bigger than it's bigger than COVID-19, God. This is literally you doing a new work and a fresh thing, and we perceive it. As Isaiah said, behold, I do a new thing. Can you not perceive it? And Father, Father, we, we, our hearts are burning within us and we're not going to wait until the move and the moment has passed before we recognize what you're doing, but we recognize what you're doing right now in our midst, God. And we say yes, we say yes to your will, we say yes to your will. Every person on this life, God, that's, that's going through a hard time and they're flustered right now, we thank you, God, that your spirit is hugging them and you're wrapping them in your arms right now. You're bringing comfort, God. You're bringing comfort to weary hearts, weary souls, unsettled spirits, God. You're unsettling it because you are love, because you are life, because you are joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we will gladly take your joy for our weakness, for we are weak, God, but your joy is our strength, God. So let your joy weld up inside of us. Not the happiness that man gives, not the feeling that goes and comes, God, but the joy, God, that is in the kingdom, God. We are your children, God, and so that we ask that you fill us with your joy tonight, God. Even as we worship, let our spirits be lifted in the name of Jesus. Let our spirits be lifted in the name of Jesus. Father, we big you up and we raise an altar to you, God. We raise our worship to you, God, for a king who is most worthy tonight, God. We speak your name and we speak about you because your word says, God, that you come in the midst of those who speak on your name, God. And where twos and trees are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst tonight, God. And so we anticipate you, Lord. We anticipate you, Lord. We anticipate you. You're doing a new thing. You're awesome. Awesome God, and there is none like you. Oh, we will sing your praise and give you all the glory. You're an awesome God, there is none like you. Oh, what are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you. like you oh, into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you oh, not like you good night everybody share the life Swim with me. water water you turn into wine oh Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you Absolutely none like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you Absolutely none like you None like you 
Our God is greater, our God is stronger, but you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, our son in power. Our God, our God, sing. Our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, yes, you are our good. Oh, oh, oh. and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what you stand against? What you stand against? Our God is greater. He's stronger. He is higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God, our God, our Call upon the name of the Lord tonight. Call his name, say, God, you are bigger. God, you are stronger. Lord, you are mighty. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Savior, he can move the mountains. Our God is mighty to save. He's mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. Heroes and conquered the grave. He is mighty to save. My God is awesome. He can move the mountain. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak. And forever he will reign. Yeah, my God is awesome. Share the life. Awesome. Oh, my God is awesome. Oh, awesome. Yes, you Jesus. You're awesome. Awesome, yeah. I'm walking around these walls. I thought by now they'd fall. I thought. But you have never. change to come knowing the battles won oh, for you have never fed me yet oh, 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 oh. your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your
need is your faithfulness Woo! Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You'll never fail me yeah. I've seen you move You move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way When there was no way And I Lordship, we declare your lordship, we declare your 
your lordship, we declare your lordship, we declare your lordship tonight. We're still in your hands and we will rest, remain and abide in you. Oh, oh, oh. One thing I desire, only this I seek, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture, laying at your feet, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, you are most beautiful. Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. One thing I desire, only this I see. Come on, you sing. Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture. Your feet, oh, oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Yeah. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, you are most beautiful, Lord. Dearest Father, dearest Father. Best friend, most beautiful, you are, you are, most beautiful, can you sing it with me, dearest father, dearest father, you are, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful, oh, there are no words, the nerve my love it sings to you. Oh, 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 there are no words, there's nothing left. My love it sings to you. Oh, 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 oh. there are no words, there's nothing. Love with you, you're beautiful. 
look Everything changes I'm captivated I'll never be the same With just one look Everything changes I'm captivated I'll never be the same With just one look Everything changes I'm captivated I'll never be the same I'll never be the same I'll never be the same With just one look I'll never be the same We fix our eyes on you Nobody else. Father, it's not just a nice prayer, God. It's the posture of our hearts that we will fix our eyes on you. Father, we take our eyes off of every moving part around us. And Father, we place it on you tonight. With just one look, everything changes. I'm captivated. We want to be captivated by you. Just one look. Everything changes I'm captivated I'll never be the same I'm so in love with you You're beautiful So beautiful I fix my gaze on you Get your Bibles. We getting in, getting into the Word tonight. There are no words. Invite your friends. Share the life tonight. There's nothing left. My love sings to you. Oh, 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 oh. There are no words. There's nothing left. My love sings to you. Oh. oh. Get your Bibles, let's go. Get your Bibles, guys. Get your Bibles. We're in the book of Genesis tonight. Good night, everybody. My name is Samuel Madas. We're here to have Bible study. Share the life, guys. Share the life. It's going to bless your heart. It's going to bless somebody's heart tonight. <laughs> You're beautiful with just one look. Yeah, DC, what's going on? Everything changes. Sammy Makiba, rep where y'all from tonight. Let me know where y'all watching from. Greet the person above you, the person under you. Tag them, tell them, yo, it's good to see you tonight. We back. We back here for Bible study. I'll never be the same. with the 
Cross, hey Jim, Trini, here right now, Sue's Dyke. Ooh. All right, let me see how I'm making this work. How am I making this work? Uh, God with us. Hey Mona, here right now. so bad Genesis chapter 11 party more in the house <laughs> Trying to get in front of the fan because it's so hot. Ooh. Ah, right, let's go. He book a Genesis with hit, hit tonight. I can't let me see. You know, I can't remember what's the was the title of tonight's message. Hold on. <laughs> uh with just one look. Everything changes. Hey fun. God, are you sure? <laughs> no, you can't, can't tour this one. <laughs> you can tour the one of Bermuda. New York City, what's happening? All right, cool. Oh, maybe I could rest my, my laptop here tonight. Yeah, the house hot. The house hot, we need book of Genesis tonight. Let me see if I could put this here so I can just look up at y'all. Yeah, this is better. Blessings, blessings, blessings to everybody. Paradise. <laughs> yeah, God, are you sure? <laughs> Am I sure if this is it? Yeah. So, like I was saying, ooh. No if. No, no IG. Okay, so I'm back in Guyana. Guyana's internet is not as fast as the other, the other nations that I was in. So I can't afford, my wife I cannot support um, streaming on both um, IG and also streaming on Facebook. But I'm going to try to get it fixed. God gives wisdom in every single thing. So, no, <laughs> not yet. But, but we're going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get into this tonight. Share the life, guys. Just remember, as we come on, just share the life. Cause, because you never know who, who, what this Bible study is going to do for somebody who is going to bless. All right? So, um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's been so much, man. I hope while I was gone, you guys were doing your Bible study um, and not just waiting on Sammy to do Bible study, but getting into the word for yourself, going, doing your research for yourself, understanding. If I never told you before, I could tell you now one of the ways that was shared with me that we can um, study the word of God, which is the indu inductive Bible study that asks the five very important questions, who, what, where, why, and when. Who, what, where, why, and when. The five W. Oh, I did share it before. I did share it before. And that opens the scripture to you. You ask, who is speaking here? Who, were, who, who is speaking here? When was this taking place? Where was it taking in place? Why did this happen? <laughs> and it opens the Bible up to you. It opens the scripture. And the Bible itself is life. This word here is life. You can't go to the word and look at it from natural eyes. Because it's just going to be a very poetic book and a book of history. But when you look at it through the lens of the Holy Spirit, he opens up everything. Thanks. I'm back. I'm back. But, but tonight we're looking at, we're looking at, we're looking at Abraham. So we did, interestingly, we did, we did Moses, right? And Moses came just after Joseph in Exodus. And, and Joseph came before Joseph came before the story of Jacob. Jacob's story came before the story of Isaac. And Isaac's story came before Abraham. So we're going right back 
Father, your word is already blessed tonight, and that's where we're going. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I did. After I said it, I remember that I did share it with you guys. Your word is already blessed. Holy Spirit, we ask that you open up this word for us tonight, that everybody gain something more than what Samuel says, more than what Samuel shares. Father, that we would hear your heart. Our hearts would hear your heart. Our ears would hear your heart more than anything else. <laughs> Thank you. So cool. We, so we're going we gonna to talk about Abraham. And first of all, more than anything else, when we do this Bible study, remember I told you all about, about narcissists and inserting yourself into the word. There are things that we can pull out from the word, but we're not going to study the Bible and we're not going to do the modern thing that everybody likes to do these days, which is to insert yourself into the word. Like, so we're talking about David and you're going to call yourself David and you're going to slay Goliath. No, we want to, more than anything else, when we research this word, when we get into it, we want to find out who God is. We want to search the nature and learn the nature of who God is, his characteristics and everything about him. That is what we want to learn. Through the lives of these people that we study, through, through these events that we study, we want to know God better because when we know God better, we know ourselves better because we are connected to him, right? Our desire, we will parallel, and at times we're able to parallel parts of Abraham's life with our own life. And tonight, I suspect we won't even reach anywhere because there's one thing that we have to deal with first before we go into the whole Abraham story. Um, but we want to learn the nature of God. Somebody said the nature of God. The nature of God. Just like how somebody can come and tell you something about one of your children or someone of your family members or even one of your friends and you are able to say, nah, that's a false report. That is not this person. That is not that person. And that is highly unlike that person. God wants us to know him intimately like that so we will know what he is like and what he is not like. And that's how you're able to test the spirits when you know who is being, who is the person behind it. You will know what resembles God and what does not resemble God. <clears throat> the nature of God. That's what we... Good night, Miss Megan. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and we like to quote... We're getting into it now. We're talking about Abraham. We like to quote... <clears throat> and we've seen it being quoted many times. Even in the New Testament, even though we're studying in the Old Testament, we're learning and uh, we see it quoted, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac... And the God of Jacob, but we do not, a lot of us really don't know the story of Abraham and why we quote that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I'll give you a short, okay, it won't be short, because <laughs> this is actually the meat of what we're getting into. Galatians refers to Abraham as the father of the believing. All of us who believe Abraham is the first one that, one that did it. <clears throat> He's a father in the faith. We call him a pillar in the faith. And he's a hero in more than one ways. We look at Abraham's example. He, Hebrews talks about faith. And one of the pillars of the faith Hebrew talks about is Abraham. He believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. But we want to go way, 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 way back. Because Abraham's story actually did not start off very heroic. And tonight, I, I do believe God is going to speak to you. Um, for some of you are on this live. Even concerning where he wants to take you. Not, not the greatness of what you're going to be, but really your answer to the call of God. That is what's more important. Not what, not what can God can do through you and what God will do to you and what he will take, where he will take you and all of that. It's about your answer to the call of God and learning how God operates. And Abraham is a prime example. Hmm. Abraham's story is one of how God calls and uses imperfection and impossibility. To bring about greatness for his name's sake. I'll say it again. Abraham's story is one that shows how God calls and God uses imperfection. Human imperfection and impossibility. Because Abraham's story was impossible. <laughs> and he uses the imperfection of a man and the impossibility of man's nature and man's situation to bring about glory. And that's what God continues to do. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants to show himself and continues to show himself in the earth. Everybody that has a testimony on this life tonight can testify that God has done impossible things. And God has used 
imperfect situations and imperfect people to bring about his will and his plan. <laughs> so we're getting into it. Genesis chapter, let me, okay, I'll use my Bible on my laptop. Genesis chapter 11. First of all, we know Abraham is Abraham, but when Abraham's story first started off, his name was not Abraham. His name was Abram. A-B-R-A-M. A-B-R-A-M. Abram. Right? So, the first place that we see Abraham, and when Abraham is introduced, yeah, when Abraham is introduced in Genesis chapter 11, there's not a lot of Abraham's life prior to that that is, is given. The information concerning Abraham's what happened prior to, to, to when he is introduced in Genesis 11, it is not known. But here's what we know about Abraham. One, he was the son of Terah. T-E-R-A-H. Terah, just write today. He was the son of Terah. Abraham had two other siblings. So he had two other brothers. Abram, sorry. Let's so we can call it who he was back then. One was Nahor and one was Haran, right? Haran had a son and his name was Lot. And Haran died, right? Abraham lived with his father, right? When Haran died, so Abraham first had, he had, he had two brothers. One was Nahor, one was Haran. Haran died. So now it's just Abraham. It's Nahor. It's his father. Abraham took his wife. Uh, a wife. His wife, then her name was Sarai. I can't remember what um, Nahor's wife was, but you could go and check it out. The old genealogy is there, right? Tyrell leaves. They, so they were born and raised in Ur of the Chaldees. And I only know this name because my dad, I heard my dad preach it many, 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 many countless times when I was a child. Ur of the Chaldees. That's where they grew up. So, after now, after Haran dies, two of them the father, their wives, and Terah, who was Abraham's dad, he collected his grandchild, who was Abraham's um, brother's son, which made Lot Abraham's nephew. And he decides, I am going to leave Ur of the Chaldees and I'm going to travel to Canaan to live. But for whatever reason, he stops and he never makes it to Canaan. But he settles down in a place called Haran. So he has a, well, he, at this point, he had a son named Haran. Haran dies and he leaves Ur of the Chaldees to go to Canaan to live. But he never makes it to Canaan. He settles down in a place named Haran. So he lives in a place that is actually the same name as his son. Right? So don't get it. Just, just write down these notes so you will understand. Right? Bam! So... While he is in Haran, terror, he dies. He dies. That's the last thing that happened in Genesis chapter 11. And now we find ourselves in Genesis chapter 12, right? Let me just, let me read it for you. Genesis chapter 12, let me go find it. Genesis chapter 12, it said, Now the Lord said unto Abraham, so we go read, now we can go back. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. Wait, let me go and get, let me get another translation. I'm going to read in New Living Translation. Now the Lord has said to Abram, leave your native country where you were born, right? Your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families of the earth shall be blessed through you. Let me go back to the King James. Right? Yeah. Again. So the Lord said unto Abraham, this is after his father dies. Abraham's dad dies. Genesis chapter 12. The Lord said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I would show thee. And I will make of thee 
of thee, from out of thee. Not I will make thee, I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So let's go back. Good, I'm glad you're here. Good night, everybody. Share the life. Share the life, guys. Share the life. Invite your friends, host watch parties, whatever you want to do. Right? Bam! The first thing we see, Genesis 11 is a prime example of many are the plans of a man's heart. Genesis 11 is a prime example of many are the plans of a man's heart. Terah, who is Abraham's father, decides after one of his sons died. He picks up everybody. Abraham's a grown man, has a wife and everybody, but he's still with his father because that was the culture back then. Picks them up and says, I am leaving where I am right now, or of the Chaldeans, and I'm going to Canaan to live. But he never makes it to Canaan for whatever reason we don't know. But we know that his, one of his plans was to make it to Canaan, but he never made it to Canaan. But along the line, he developed another plan, which was to settle in Haran. Many are the plans of a man's heart. You understand? But like I said multiple times before in the Bible studies, that God sets us up sometimes. Many are the plans of a man's heart. And here we are in chapter 12 now, where God speaks to Abraham after his father died. And we see that ch chapter 12 of Genesis, it really, that is the embodiment of, but it is the Lord's plans that will be established. Many are the plans of a man's heart is chapter 11, but it is the Lord's will that will prevail. It is the Lord's purposes that will stand. So we see one man had a plan and that plan failed, but now God speaks. God speaks to, and we, we will actually reach to when God speaks to Abraham, and we can break that down a little bit. But if you notice, God says, I will, I will, I will, I will. This is God, God taking over chapter 12 now. Okay, 11 was yours, you had all these plans. And it's over a whole bunch of years. So don't let me read it fast and feel that this man just settled, settled in Haran and then he died. There's a lot of things happened. But now we come to chapter 12 now. And God decides to step on the scene and God said to Abraham. But in order for you to understand, God speaking to Abraham. Whoo, we got to establish a couple of things. Mm, 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 mm. I pasted something. Let me go and find it. Cool. So let's draw a picture of Abraham. Abraham, right now, while we're studying him. Yeah, yeah. While we're studying Abraham right now, his name is Abram. It's not Abraham. Abraham, interestingly, we quote him. We quote him as a father in the faith, a pillar in the faith. We quote Abraham, even when we pray, we say, God, you're the God of Abraham, you're the God of Isaac, and you're the God of Jacob. Like I started when I said, we hail Abraham as a hero in the faith. Hebrew speaks very, very highly about Abraham. He believed God. He was one that really, really stood on the promises of God. And Abraham is a story of unfolding, gradual faith being built in God and who he says he is and what he will do. But when we go back to Abraham, one of the first things we will find out that Abraham comes from a family of not just idol worshipers. Abraham comes from a line of not just people who worship idols, but Abraham's immediate father, Terah that we just spoke of. He was a pagan priest. And not only did he worship other gods, but he built idols and he sold them. So Abraham is the son of a man that just, not, he doesn't only, yeah. <laughs> he is the child of a man who is not just an idol worshiper. This man builds false gods and sells false gods. Not just one false god. He builds many false gods. Abraham's story is happening in a time and it's happening in a season and it's happening in a setting where everybody is worshiping anything that they want to worship, left, right, and center. And his daughter is making a killing and a living 
off of this fact that people are worshiping many different things. He is building gods, building idols, building representation of idols and selling it. And Abraham is his son. So Abraham has come up in his father's house. Abraham's a grown man now. And all he has learned, all that he has seen is his father being a priest, worshiping idols. <laughs> That's all he knows. His father has worshipped idols. <laughs> and this makes it very interesting. In this setting of Abraham coming from a long line of idol worshippers, God steps in and we're in Genesis chapter 12. And the Bible said, now the Lord had said unto Abraham. That's what Genesis, that was Genesis chapter 12 starts off with. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, whoa, 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 back it up. Back it up. This man comes from idol worship. His own lineage, as the, the beginning of chapter 11, coming straight down gives you the lineage. <laughs> it gives you the ancestry of everybody coming down to Tiro who give birth to Abraham and his two brothers. They, they didn't know the true God. Yet, God could have chosen anybody else. God could have chosen a simple man who is not an idol worshiper, who don't make money off of building idols, who don't perpetuate and promote the worship of idols. God chooses his son, Abraham, to speak to. And to give this promise to. And the first thing, that's the first thing that stood out to me. And I had to write it down. That God is no respecter of persons. That's why I told you I share the life tonight. Because some people need to hear that God is no respecter of persons. In other words, God does not show partiality. God sets his heart on who he sets his heart on. Regardless of where they come from. Regardless of their background, regardless of their affiliation or lack of affiliation, regardless of the darkness of their past, regardless of the vagueness of their future, God sets his heart on them. You need to understand this. Abraham is the son of a pagan priest who makes idols and sells idols and God decides to use Abraham and to insert himself into this lineage here, into this situation here. It rocked me. God is no respect of persons. Type that tonight. Say, God is no respect of persons. Abraham, we hail him as a father in the faith, appealing the faith. We reference him, but we don't understand that before Abraham was Abraham, he was Abram. And now God decides, this is the man that I want to use. God is no respecter of persons. God is an absolutely no respecter of persons. And when I thought about that, I thought about the book of Acts. And I quickly take you to the book of Acts to show you that this is God's nature. Because above every other thing, we want to understand the nature of God. Not just to look at Moses and Joshua and look at joseph's story and all of them and try to fit ourselves in david and fit ourselves with, but to above every other thing to learn the nature of god to understand that god does not show partiality and it is proven time and time again throughout the scriptures way into the new testament that this is how god is he is no respecter of person he will set his heart on who he sets his heart on let me don't get ahead of myself acts chapter 10 verse 9 okay let me go and find it I'll give you the synopsis, right? Hmm. Acts chapter 10, 1. It says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Itali Italian band or the Italian regiment, right? Now, I want you to understand, Cornelius was from Rome, right? The Bible says in 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 we in Acts chapter 10, verse 2. But it says, so Cornelius, while Cornelius is growing up, he is exposed to all of the Roman gods. This is another time here. And I'll show you that God does not show partiality and he's no respecter of person and he will use who are willing to be used by him. Cornelius, the Bible says, he, is a, he was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which give much alms to the people and prayed to God always. 
And he saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God comes to him and says to him, Cornelius, and he looked at him and he was afraid. And the angel said, listen, two things. Your prayers have been answered. And two, the good that you have been doing has come up before God as a memorial. Therefore, and then the angel gives him instructions, send two of your men to go to X and X place. You're going to meet somebody named Peter, right? Understand, Cornelius, he wasn't, he, first of all, he was Rome. He was Roman, right? And so the Jews at that time, they had a respect for people who feared God. There were those, there were those who, who were Gentiles, but they also feared God, but they were not a part of the promise. They weren't included yet. Understand? And so they, the Jews kind of had a respect for people who feared God. But what they had no respect for was people like Cornelius because he was a centurion. He was a high-ranking official. These men were loyal to the throne that oppressed the Jews. So he wasn't an ordinary man. He, but he feared God. He was an upright man, a devout man with all his house. And he gave them to the poor. So he was a good man. So the angel gives him instruction to go and look for this person. The Bible says the next day now, here comes Peter. Peter is up on the rooftop praying. And he gets hungry. And while he is hungry and waiting for food, he falls into a trance. And in this trance, there is a sheet that comes from heaven with a whole bunch of different animals, varying animals. Let me just find it as a matter of fact. Let me find it. 11, it says, And he saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending upon him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and fowl of the air. And there came a voice unto him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, no, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now, Peter is the man of God. Cornelius is not the man of God. He's just devout and he's God-fearing and he does good. Peter, the next day now, is having a vision of a cloth tied at the four ends coming down and a whole manner of stuff. Beast of the field, serpent. Let me, where is it? Not serpents, creeping things, fowls of the air, beasts of the earth, wild beasts. Peter is a Jew, and the Jews don't eat certain things. The Jews don't partake in certain things. And Peter comes now, and Peter sees a vision. And in this vision, a voice that set down these things in front of Peter said, Peter, get up, kill, and eat. <laughs> now, it's interesting that just before Peter sees this, Peter is hungry. You understand? And that is very significant. That, that shows you how devout Peter was. That even in his state of hunger, he refuses to eat this because he's stuck in his tradition. He's stuck in what he knows. And Peter literally tries to rebuke God who was speaking and says, Nope, not so. Nothing unclean or common has ever come into my mouth and it's not about to, today is not about to be the day. And verse 15 says, and the voice spake unto him again a second time. What God had cleansed, don't you dare call common. What God had cleansed. Let me go back to my notes. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call. This is the New Living Translation. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Do not call anything unpure that God has made clean. The King, Virg King James Version said, and what God had cleansed. That call not thou uncommon. Three times this happened. Three times the Bible records that this happened. So Peter is wrestling with what he knows, what he knows to be right, as opposed to what is happening. And then the Bible said they was taken aback. Bam! While all this is happening, God gives Peter instructions. And the men, so Cornelius sends two men who we trust very much to go and bring Peter. Peter receives information now that these two men are coming for him. And so he goes down while the men are inquiring. They go anyways. P 
Peter goes with them and he meets Cornelius. Cornelius bows down, starts worshiping. Because remember, he's a devout man. He fears God, but he doesn't really know. He's not too afraid with what's going on in Christianity. Peter says, get up. I'm a man just like you. And they start talking. And Peter hears of God working in this man who is a Roman and devout to the throne of Rome. And Peter is a Jew. And the Romans oppress the Jews. You understand? And Peter is hearing that God, through visions and, and, and appearing to these men, give them instructions as to what will happen. And Peter gets up and says, of a truth, I perceive, I now see that God is no respecter of persons. And you need to understand that it happened with Abraham and it happened with Cornelius. That these are people who are the least likely to be chosen by God. But God chooses them nevertheless. Abraham is the son of a man who makes idols and encourages idolatry. And God chooses to insert himself into that situation. Cornelius is on the other hand. He's devoted to the throne of Rome and God still chooses to use him. And Peter said, yo, I'm a Jew. I'm not even supposed to be dealing. And he said it. If you read down. In Acts chapter 10, you will see Peter, you know, he got to give his introduction. And he said, but nevertheless, I follow the spirit. And then Peter is mind blown by what he is hearing from Cornelius. And he said, yo, God really don't show partiality. God is, a res God is no respecter of person. He will use whoever he wants to use. And this is where it's, it's time for you to use, look at your life and understand that God will use you. God wants to use you. The fact that you are here. He wants to use you. <laughs> and sometimes we look at our own qualifications or lack of qualifications or where we come from or what our family is like. <laughs> and we look at people. This is the other part. So there's one part when we look at ourselves, but there is the other part where we look at people and we judge them according to where they come from what is happening in their lives at the present moment. And we make a differentiation and we make a decision whether this person is fit or this person is not fit to be used by God. But I want to tell you tonight, God is no respecter of persons. He will use whoever he wants to use. He will use whoever he wants to use. The voice said, don't you call dirty what God has cleansed. You understand? That's the King James Version. Cleanse. What God has cleansed, you don't call it common. What God has cleansed. The New Living Translation said, don't call anything pure that God has made clean. He has made it clean. To be cleansed and to be made clean means that at one point, you were dirty. At one point, you were impure. But God has now made it clean. God has now made it pure. God has removed the impurities. So really and truly, the only person who could make that call is God. Because he's the only person who chooses to clean. And he's the only person that can clean. You understand? To be cleansed means to be made holy. And let me, let me, let me, let me slow down this thing of holiness right now. And understand that you can't obtain, I can't obtain holiness. On our own. Holiness, we have to be made holy by him who is holy. <laughs> there is nothing that you and I can do. There is no 10 steps to becoming holy. You will see nowhere in the word of God where there are 10 steps, 12 steps. There's a 12-month there's a period for you to become holy. Mm -mm. Holiness has to be given to you by him who is holy. Anybody else who, who, apart from God, can't give you holiness. It is a state given to you. Hmm. And likewise, it's like being a child of God. A child cannot adopt parents. Parents have to adopt a child and make a child their child. Hmm. Holiness is a state that has been given to you. Are we going to... We go. We're going to get into it. What I call clean, what I have made clean, you don't call it dirty. 
It's a position given to you. Remember when we talk about sonship? <laughs> it's a state of holiness. God calls in. Let me let me just find let me let me find this scripture. Where is it? First Peter. Look what the Bible says. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, right? It comes from the Creator. You don't obtain holiness. It has to be given to you. Right? First Peter 2 9, and we quote this, but you are what? First of all, slow down. First Peter 2 9. Peter didn't say, but you are becoming a chosen generation. Peter says, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. And what? You are a holy nation. Peter is talking to people who are imperfect, but yet still, he tells them, this is what you are. <laughs> This is what God has made you. You don't have to know. You don't have to work to obtain this. But I can, I can, I can, we can qualify this just now in a moment. It is given by God. God calls us holy. A holy nation. You are a peculiar people. What we have to do after God has given us this position is now learn how to flesh it out. You understand? Let me see if I can explain this for you. Mm. If today you are broke and you just have $20 in your name and somebody calls you, a lawyer calls you and says to you, and, oh, worse than that, if you are living at this level here where you have never had much in your life, right? You have been living from paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes your paycheck don't even do for the bills that you have. Today, you got paid today and you can't even see the money because the bank probably take, out, take it out for mortgage or something like that. And now you got to hustle and decide, probably make some snacks on the weekend to raise funds to give your children. And right now you're happy that COVID... Right now, shut down the schools because you don't have money to send all them to school, blah, 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 blah. And today, self, this afternoon, a lawyer calls you over to the office and tells you that somebody died. And in that person's will, they'll put your name in it and everything that they own is yours. And today, this morning, you are broke. And tomorrow, you're waking up as a millionaire. You got money galore. You can afford to buy houses, buy cars, stop renting, do whatever you feel like doing. Do you have to work to be a millionaire? No. Nope. That is given to you. What you have to do now is learn how to operate it within this new position, within this new realm, within this new space that has been given to you. You understand? Now you, because you never knew before how to handle big money. You never knew before how to protect investments or to make investments. You never knew before how to watch your company now because people will all of a sudden attach themselves to you. So what you have to do now is learn how to flesh out this new position that has been given to you. And that is what the Holy Spirit and mentors and leaders help us with. We have been made holy by God. We don't have to attain holiness. What we have to do now is to learn to flesh out this holiness that is within us, that has been given to us. We are clothed in his righteousness and in his, in his favor we stand. And that is very, very key. That's where most of us get lost. Right there. Because when we get it wrong, and when things start happening in the opposite direction, and when we keep falling and bouncing, we head and bouncing, we face, we think, that we are no longer what God has already declared that we are. <laughs> when really and truly God's plan for us does not change. Whenever we get it wrong, we start assuming that because I keep getting this wrong, that maybe I'm not holy anymore. Maybe God's plan for me has changed because I keep falling short. And God is saying, listen, this is a position I give to you. You can't earn this. I have literally placed this on you. I have chosen you. When we get it wrong, we allow people to speak and we allow people to put labels on us because of what we did, because of what they know we did. <laughs> and literally, God is saying, my plans for you have not changed. You are clothed in my righteousness. I'm gonna find, let me 
hmm, where's this other scripture? Romans 8. Let me see if I could. Yeah. Yeah, learn to flesh it out. The position that has been given to you. You understand? Romans 8, verse 30. Flesh out this thing that God has given to us. We just got to learn to walk in it. When you get, like, if you wear flats for the rest of your, like, for the entirety of your life, and somebody gives you heels, the heels is yours. What you got to do is learn how to walk in it. Do you understand? Today you can be broken. Tomorrow you can be adopted by a king, and you are the king's son. What you have to now do is learn how to operate as royalty. <laughs> Learn to stop begging. Learn that all your needs are supplied. Learn that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to your father. So you will not suffer. You will not beg for bread. He is your daddy. Your daddy is the king. So that makes you royalty. You learn, have to learn how to live as royalty. God has given us holiness. He has placed holiness on us. How? Let me tell you. Romans 8 chapter where, where 28. Let me see. Let me see if I have it open. Let me read from 29. This is another popular scripture, right? And it says, from who, For whom he did foreknew, he did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. He predestined it, right? That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30 is where I want to get that. Verse 30 says, Moreover, who he did predestine, them he also called. And who he called, them he justified. So understand who does the, okay, let me, let me, let me go back to justify. What does it mean to justify? To justify something means to show or to prove to be right or reasonable. So you are not required to justify your life. You're not required to justify your calling. All you have to do is to know that you are called. Because God does the justifying. The word of God says, and whom he called. Just like he called Cornelius. Just like he called Abraham. Who was not yet Abraham. Who comes from very, very sketchy environments. Very, very sketchy beginnings. He calls them. And we need to know that when God calls us, that's all the validation that we need to know that we are called by God. Because the devil would play on our minds and say, this is where you come from. Your mother was this. Your father was this. And you know what's weird? When you check Terah's name, right? Abraham's father. It says that there is no meaning behind, behind it. And for many of us, we come from families with no name. Meaning there's no prestige behind it. None whatsoever. Abraham's father... His name had no meaning. Father of many nations, this one means blessed. This one, Samuel, means because I've asked of the Lord. This one means the spoken word of God. Tira means nothing. It has no Hebrew meaning to it. And this is where Abraham is coming from. And God chooses Abraham. He doesn't come from a profound place. He doesn't come from a place of prestige. But God justify him. The word of God says who he called, he justify. Regardless of what you know about her, regardless of what you know about him, regardless of what the report says, I have justified. He is the right person for the position. Two supervisors are arguing to hire this person or not to hire this person. And they can't decide. This person is not qualified. Why is their name still in the file? Da, 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 da. Or this person is supposed to get a raise, but they don't. They don't. Do, 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 do. And they're at loggerheads and they decide, listen, let me go to the CEO of the company or let me go to the manager or whoever. The manager is in his office. They walk in. He's, he just looks up. What is it? Looks at the file and makes an executive decision. They have been quarreling for half a day. The manager or CEO or whatever he is at the top or she is at the top, makes an executive decision. Hire him. That's the end of the story right there. They can go back and mumble all they want, but an executive decision has already been made that this is my decision, that I choose this person. This person is going to be hired. This person is going to get a raise. And that's the end of the argument in front here. He justified it. 
But he is not only worthy of justifying it because he's at the top. He's worthy of justifying because his nature has proven that he is wise. That's why they're at the top. Because they've proven that their leadership and their prowess and their ability to see ahead is more than the rest of you. That's why I'm at the top. And that's why God is the only one who can justify. You are not called to justify yourself. You don't have to say to people, listen, I know things and what you know about me or heard about me. I, I can change. You guys just got to give me it. No, God is the one. When God validates you, you are validated for life because his plans for you doesn't change. His plans for you remain. <laughs> Who he called, he justified. And here comes Abraham. Woo. Here comes Abraham on the scene. God says, yo, I have chosen you. This is what I'm going to do through you, regardless. The Bible doesn't say Abraham did anything. He didn't reply to God, ask a lot of questions. But understand, God is speaking to you, not about something that you have been exposed to for all your life. And even me, when people spoke prophetically over my life, I had been exposed to the things of the Lord. But the stuff that God spoke over my life, I couldn't even envision it. All right, let me not jump the gun. Let me not jump the gun. Let me just... We go. Let me not jump. Y'all following? <laughs> God is the one who justified, proved, shown to be right. And the accuser of the brethren, the word says, the accuser of the brother has been hurled down forever. That's why we worship Jesus. Because he's forever making intercession. The devil goes to the courts of heaven and rails accusation against God's elect, against the saints. And regardless of whatever he rails against us, because trust me, if you, if you think the devil don't know your files, the devil has a file in every one of us. Every offense known. He has it. And he goes to the courts of heaven and puts your name on the stand. And said, she did it. X, this, this, this is why you can't. You did, 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 did. And Jesus said, yeah, my blood has paid for that. Justified. Judea, justified. Samantha, justified. Nala, justified. Candy, justified michael justified and he really an accusation and my blood has already covered that before they were formed i formed them in their mother's womb i already ordained what they're going to be mm. 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 so god speaks to abraham God says to Abraham, let me find it. God speaks to Abraham. God's, God now steps on the scene. Now, the reason why I went through all of that is to explain to you that now God speaks to Abraham. So you understand how monumental this is for God to tell Abraham, get up out of your father's house. From all your relatives and your kin and I'm gonna send you to a land let me let me read it one more time for you and then we are gonna pedal back again because there's a lot happening right here now the Lord had said to Abraham get thee out of your country leave your country from your kindred as your family from your father's house from your father's house now his, his dad had died but when God says your father's house, it means what you have inherited. That is not your inheritance right there. Whatever your father used to be, whatever your mother used to be, whatever your family is known for, I will create a new inheritance for you now. Get, come out from that environment to a land that I will show thee. <laughs> Sorry. And it says, I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I will make thy name great. Hold up, back it up. First of all, do you understand that Abraham is a pagan and God speaks to him? No, the Bible doesn't specifically say how God spoke to Abraham. But I want you to know, if you don't get anything from this life, I want you to know that God is able to speak to you. Just like he spoke to Abraham. Abraham wasn't a Christian. Christianity didn't even exist then. 
But God spoke to him. And just like God spoke to Abraham, God can speak to you. God can, and not only can God speak to you, and for those who are in church, for those who are in the kingdom and those who are strong in the faith, I want you to understand that God can speak to you and give you clear-cut instructions and clear-cut promises just like he did to Abraham. And I believe that we are living in a time, the days, and this is the season where we stop having to, we got to stop being weak and running behind wishy-washy, half-baked, vague, ambiguous prophetic words that saying, oh, I hear the Lord saying, yes, this is your season. Mm, I hear the Lord saying, this is your time. I hear the Lord saying, yes, it's a new day. Yeah, there's going to be some things that's going to be turned around. Listen, back then, the, the word of God says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That means if God was able to give Abraham, a man who was not even in the covenant yet, God is now starting this story and able to give Abraham clear-cut instructions. This is where I want you to go. This is what I want you to leave. This is what I'm going to give to you. This is what I'm going to make out of you. This is what I'm going to cause to come from out of you. If God can do that back then, then God can give you clear-cut prophetic words now. Stop running behind these sensational prophetic words. Oh, it's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new time. It's a new turnaround. Oh, oh God is shifting some things. No, 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 no. In this moment here, in this snapshot of time, in this season, God is able to speak very, very clearly. <laughs> But you got to separate and pull yourself out from the frequencies of the sensation. Listen. I, okay. I will be calm. I will be calm. That is why we, we got to get into the word of God. You will realize that God speaks. Remember I told you about Peter? Cornelius is having a dream. Not a dream, a vision, an appearance from God, giving him clear-cut instructions. And the next day, the person who's supposed to be connected to is getting a vision and God is bringing clarity. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a divine connection, a Kairos moment for a better man. And if God is doing that way back then, what make, why are we settling for these wishy-washy, half-baked, vague, could mean anything to anybody even now, even now, ooh, I see, I see a turnaround. Yeah, yeah, you've been, you've been. And I'm not saying, let, let me just, let me just make it very clear. Anybody that's, that uses these terms, I'm not saying that they're fake. I'm not saying that they're wishy-washy. Just, I hope that you, everybody's mature to understand what I'm saying. But stop running behind these very vague stuff and understand that God in this moment want to bring clarity and it and and it, he bears spirit, his spirit bears weakness with your spirit. And here, people giving people prophetic words and charging them an arm and a leg for what they could hear from God themselves. People are giving them prophetic words that a dog could say bow wow when you would understand. And this is not the season for the God is saying, listen, I spoke back then and I'm able to speak now. <laughs> Discernment. God told Abraham, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Abraham had clear cut instructions. <laughs> somebody, somebody on the life so people are selling prayer kits <laughs> don't, don't, don't take the bluff people don't take the bluff God is speaking and if God can do it to a man who is the son of a pagan worshiper and an idol seller then God is able to speak in this moment that's why we got to get into this word we got to get into this word here We got to get into this word. God called Abraham. So this is what I'm going to do for you. The promise was bigger than Abraham. And throughout the Bible studies that we're going to have after now, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get into it. It's, it's so deep. And the more you read about Abraham and his gradual trust in God, 
And the fact that when God spoke Abraham, the Bible said he raised an altar. It means he worshipped. <laughs> this was a promise bigger than Abraham. Understand, you, God, God said, leave. And I'll say one more thing before we end tonight, right? We now, we're not going to drag this out because I, I don't want to clutter it. Before we are sent, this is what the Lord said to me today. And it's so simple. It's like I should have thought of it before. Before you are sent, you have to be called. And a lot of us are running without being sent. And the reason why we are not sent is because we are not called. God called Abraham and give him instructions. I saw a thing the other day and... and I munched it. I can't remember. But it was from David Uyudipu. He's an African preacher with one of the largest churches in Africa. And he spoke about divine revelation from God. Heavenly vision. It said heavenly vision without heavenly instructions would end in frustration. That's why we got to stay close to God and keep listening to him. Abraham's story could have ended in frustration. And you can go ahead and start reading it. So when we keep having this Bible study here, you're going to be able to catch up very fast. Read the whole account of Abraham. You would see how many times these promises that God gave to Abraham could have ended in frustration because they were bigger than him. And that's the thing about God. God gives us promises that are bigger than us. God doesn't cater to our mediocrity. Type that. God does not cater to my mediocrity. God caters to what he wants to do, and then he chooses vessels. That's why I said Abraham's story is the, the classic story of God using imperfection and impossibility to bring greatness about. <laughs> that's, that's just who God is. God says, but first, and, and look at the principle. God says, what's the first thing God says to him? Get thee out. Sometimes when God speaks to you and God has stuff for you to do, he can't even reveal to you. And a lot of us are running and say, God, speak to me, God, speak to me, God, speak to me. But what God wants to do, the downpours, the downloads, the impartation, the instruction that God wants to give us, he can't give us because first we need to separate. We need to leave what he's telling us to leave. Your comfort zone makes it hard for you to hear anything outside of that frequency zone. It makes it so difficult. Me, what I'm doing here, it's in, it was in, close to impossible for me to start. Like at the, at the beginning of this life, I was telling you, it's in, it was close to impossible. Share the life. It was close to impossible for me to even try to start doing this while in Guyana. God had to literally take me out and carry me very far. And if at any time, and I never told anybody like on the live this, at any time that I started to have doubts and get frustrated, the Lord would send somebody with a prophetic word. There are people on this life, some of them don't even comment, just jump in my inbox and say, the Lord send me, tell me to say this and always encourage me. One woman said to me a day, I seriously was going to complain on Facebook. And if you guys notice for the whole while that I was stuck outside of Guyana, I never jump on any of those news pages and say, oh my God, do something. The government needs to do something for me to come home. But there, there are times when I really wanted to come home and vent my frustration. And a woman of God jumped in my inbox and said, the Lord said, don't let him catch murmuring on your lips. <laughs> I said, <laughs> backspace. Let me not complain. Because right where you are is right where God wants you. And for many of you, God can't give the instructions or the promises. Because first, you got to come out. You got to come out. He tells him first what you need to do. Come out so that this could happen. I want to do this, but you need to come out. There's a separation. Remove yourself from either the shame of your family name or the prestige of your family name. Because I'm doing something very, very different. Just like I did with Abraham. It's not about you. It's about me. And then God gives Abraham a promise that is so big. 
And as you read on, you will understand the impossibility of the situation because Abraham was mad old and his wife was mad old. God promises them a child. She was barren and God promises them a child. And that just complicates things. Some of us, we doubt prophetic words. The Bible said, don't, the Bible said don't, don't despise prophesying. Some of us hear prophetic words that are so bigger than us and we are battling in our minds whether this person is just making up things or this is a false prophecy or maybe this prophecy was meant for the person next to me because of the magnitude of it. But God does not cater to our mediocrity. God caters to himself and the bigness of who he is and then he chooses to use us. Abraham said, what? Well, my father make a name. <laughs> he died, he left a house. I'm the eldest child, because see, Abraham was the eldest child, according to research. Now that I know settling down, you gonna tell me, God, do this? And so, this thing becomes an act and a step of faith now that I've never walked this way before. But I've also never had this sensation. I've never had this feeling. I've, nobody's ever appeared to me and give me clear-cut instructions like this. And there's something inside of me that tells me that I am more than just a shepherd. I am more than just the, father, the, the, the son of Terah, who really was an evil man. So I am going to trust what you are saying, and I'm going to remove myself regardless. Ah, you know I came to study this? Because one day the Lord said to me, that what he has called us to do, it has to be able to survive outside of the opinions and the approval of people. We got to read between the lines. When God, God asks you to make life-changing decisions, it is really something for you to ponder about. None of these people that Abraham are picking up, because he also picked up Lot. Lot is not even his child. That is his brother's child, his nephew. He picked them up and said, we're moving from what we know. And we're moving to the unknown. They have probably many questions. But Abraham had a word. <laughs> he had a word. Many of us, we are stuck in our comfort zone. Like, yo, what am I going to do? Like, but I just got here. I know settling. What are you telling me to do? <laughs> Understand why we were singing earlier tonight. I've seen you move. You move the mountain. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. Oh. Still in your hands. This is my confidence that you have never felt. Abraham is making little moves. He's moving his family and everybody. All that were gathered to him, the Bible said. And he's moving out. Separate yourself so that this promise could. And Abraham, now we say, God, you're the God of Abraham, you're the God of Isaac, you're God. He is right now still Abraham. He has not yet had his name changed. The beginning of his testings and his testimonies has not even yet started. And the Lord wants to make testimonies out of us, the, the Lord wants to establish his name through us. Not just to make us heroes. And there's nothing wrong, wrong with being a hero. There's nothing wrong with being a standard. God said to Moses, I'm going to make you, not Moses, Abraham, I'm going to make you a standard. I'm going to make your name great. Out of you will come kings. I give you land. I'm going to make you a blessing. And those that bless you, I'm going to bless them. Those that curse you, I'm going to curse them. But first you got to come up. You got to pull yourself out from this environment. That's all you have known. And you will die not seeing any of the promises if first you don't remove yourself from that environment there. Come out to a land that I will show you. <laughs> I said it on one of the other lives. God doesn't always show us the whole picture and all the instructions. A life laid down before God is just a series of yeses. That's all it is. A series of yes, yes, yes. Give me instructions. Yes, yes, yes. Because seeing everything and just overwhelm us. Just like we are not made to touch the glory of God. We're not made to handle that. We are not made to know everything. That is why God, ooh, God, that's why God told Adam in the garden. He said, don't trouble though. 
the eyes will be open. You were not made to handle all of that knowledge. They couldn't handle it. And, and because of what they did, we are thrown into this today. But I will walk you through it. I will be faithful. My name is faithful. It's not just a characteristic. That is my very name. I will be faithful. And my promises still stand. Don't disqualify yourself. That food, that, I, can't, I can't stress it. Hmm. Come on, man. What's wrong with my internet? Lord. Oh, it's back. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Yeah, don't disqualify yourself. If God could use Abraham, we talk about Abraham like he's the best thing ever. But Abraham came from very sketchy beginnings. Very idolatrous past, but God decided, I will justify you. Who I call, I am justifying, regardless of what they say, regardless of what they know. My stamp of, appro of approval is upon you, and all I'm requiring is your yes. I'm not going to use you. I am no respecter of persons. I did it with Cornelius. I did it with Zacchaeus. I did it with all these disciples who were cuss words. These guys didn't know nothing. Some of them never went to school. All they know is fishing. All they know is a trade. And God says, I will upturn the world with them. For my sake. It's not about them. <laughs> it's just the vessels I'm looking for. What is God asking you tonight? Have you disqualified yourself because you keep falling? Have you forgotten what God has given to you and placed on you? His plans for you doesn't change. God, God's plan for us doesn't change. Just because you fell. Don't forget what God said you are. He has given to us holiness. There are certain things that we can't attain. God has given to us. What we have to learn to do is to flesh it out. To walk in it. Never forget. Never ever forget. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This in my confidence. You've never failed me yet. You've never failed me. Never fail me yet. You never fail me. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe. I see you do it again. You made a way. Where there was no way. And I believe. I see you do it again. Father, we believe that you're going to do it. You're going to be for the person who's on this life who's been disqualifying themselves. God, because their beginning is very shaky. Their inheritance is little or nothing. And they don't understand that, God, what they come. Ooh. Ooh. Before I end this life, yeah. Understand two things. The condition that you come to God in is no qualifying or disqualifying factor for God using you. The condition that you come to God in. I have seen multiple times where people crashed vehicles and wrote it off. And the insurance company said, nah, the right off. That can't come back. Give him a new car. And then a year later, you see that, and somebody say, you remember the car that crashed last year? Yeah. That's the car that's back on the road. And you look in amazement at something that was mangled, something that was written off, something that was condemned to grow to the scrapyard. It's now on the road again. 
Why? Because somebody had vision to look beyond what is described, to look beyond what is mangled, to look beyond what is seemingly destroyed. Somebody had pockets deep enough. Somebody had a passion strong enough to take a year and restore something that somebody else has written off. And that's the kind of God we serve. His vision is not like man's vision. So when people write you off and when you write off yourself, understand God is saying, mm -mm. no, 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 it's not the end. I'm going to bring you back. We serve the kind of God whose pockets are so deep because he owns the very earth that we live on. That there is nothing too expensive for him that he can bring us back. Ah! We serve a God who is so passionate that regardless of how many times we fall and get mangled and bruised, regardless of what condition you are in, when you come to God, it is not a deciding factor for if he's going to use you. The second thing is, regardless of what condition you are in, when God calls you, that is not a deciding factor of whether he will use you or not. I had to say that these two things because one, we come to God in particular conditions. But understand more than us coming to God, the only way we can come to God is if he draws us. Jesus himself said it in John. He said, understand that no man or woman cometh unto me except my father which sent me draws him. So regardless of how you came to God, whether you decided that I got my heart broken and my heart opened, just cracked a little bit to say, let me try Jesus. Or whether somebody invited you to church and it was, it was just the moment where you were going through a lot. Whether you made a decision that, hey, I feel like I can give God a try or too much bad thing happening to me. Let me just give my life to Christ. However you came to God, understand that you could not have come to him unless he drew, he drew you. It is God that does the drawing. That's what the word says. And the fact that we know now that our decision to come to Jesus is because God first draw us. We got to understand that it, it doesn't matter what condition we come in. Because if he didn't want us, he would not have drawn us. Never let anybody disqualify you and never let you disqualify yourself. He draws us. He draws us. He draws us. I believe I'll see you do it again. Your daddy is the king. Your royalty. Father, we honor you tonight. We honor you. We honor you, <laughs> Jesus. This is the bloodline that you came through. You created a people for yourself. You gave Abraham such a big promise and fulfilled it. Not because of who Abraham was. He was a nobody. But you took him and because of his yes and his gradual obedience. And you made his name something. And through him, we are blessed. Father, may we stop running from giving you the yes and finding all of these excuses. Maybe this plan is bigger than me. Maybe it's not meant for me. And to understand that you are calling us regardless of what condition we are in because your plans for us existed before we existed in the physical realm and it does not change. You have did it, done it time and time before and you will continue to do it because that is who you are. You are faithful. You are powerful. You are all wise. You are omniscient. You are omnipotent. You are omnipresent. This is who you are. More than the more than the fixers in the natural of mechanical vehicles, you are the greatest fixer. You are a redeemer. You are our restorer. That is who we call you tonight. You are able to take and separate us from what we thought was bad and to give us a new future, an expected end. For everybody on this live who's been contemplating giving their lives to you, Father, tonight, may they have a conversation with you. Not a religious conversation, but a real conversation. And tell you that they're willing to lay down their lives and to make you Lord. 
because you can make something and will make something out of them. God, give them the peace that only Jesus can give. Give them the living water that only Jesus can give because they've been thirsting and drinking from many different wells that leave them more thirsty than they were before they drank from those wells. But thank you tonight, God, that you are the well of living water. Streams, streams is what you want to come out of us, not just to give us living water, but we become streams, Father. Every tired person, every weary person, every angry person, every distraught person, every person whose spirit has been broken because of what people said, because of what people did, because of what people didn't do for them, because they were maligned, because they were spited, because they were sidelined, because they were marginalized. Let them know, Father, that this, that they thought is the end could very well be the beginning where they allow you to step in and to start your story and writing out your script and playing it out in their lives, God. That where they started is no indication of where they're going to end. In the mighty name of Jesus, you can do it. And you will do it. The call of God on your life, it will survive outside of the approval of people. It will survive outside of the strangeness of a new environment. Mm, it will, it will, it will, it will. I believe I see you do it again. Yeah. It was a good night. It was a good night. And God is still speaking. If there's anything that stood out to you tonight, I want you to type it before we leave this life. Don't leave the life yet. Type it. Type type out. Think. That's how you solidify it. Type at least one thing that stood out to you tonight from, from us starting this story and really examining who, Mo, uh, who Abraham was and where he came from and God's decision to use him. Yeah. Yep. The call of God in my life will sustain me. It will. It's the call that sustains us. I see you do it again. We can trust him because he's trustable. He's dependable. We put the trust in people. We put the trust in products just because of the flare and the flam of the, advertis uh, the advertisement. And here we have a God who's been the rock of our salvation and our dwelling place throughout all generations. Would we not trust him? Don't disqualify yourself. Doesn't matter your background. Yep, yep, to be used and loved by God. Don't disqualify yourself. God will use your imperfections. He will insert himself into your story. Uh, God doesn't cater to my mediocrity. Yep. God speaks from his bigness. He doesn't speak from our mediocrity. God doesn't say, oh, daughter, I see you, you know, you've been crying out for, you know, this loan or this car or whatever, you know, I'm going to do it. God speaks greatness over us, bigger than we can ask or imagine. The Bible said it. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Doesn't matter where I came from or what I've done. God is still willing to use me. Yep. You don't have to carry on the shame of your family name. You could do better. Yep, don't let people disqualify you and you don't disqualify. Yep. It's not about my plans for myself, but it's about the Lord. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's his divine prerogative. Mm -hmm. God's plan for your life, it doesn't change. God will insert himself into my story, which is really his story. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No new circumstances will change or affect. Yep. Mm -hmm.
God speaks greatness over us. Can you imagine God appearing? Yep. And stop running behind wishy-washy prophetic words. God is able to give instruction. God is able to speak greatness and to walk us through that greatness. We have been made holy by Jesus. It's for us to learn how to walk in this holiness and to flesh it out. Yep. Somebody says, I'm available, Lord. That's the best thing that you could tell God. I'm available. What do you want to do with my life? Because the heights that I can carry in my life is nothing compared to what you want to do through me. Because what you can do through me will impact not just my life, but it will impact nations, generations. Yeah. Our lives are a series of yeses. Mm-hmm. Yep. Woo! I love you, man. How much? How late did I go? Good time. Finish in two minutes. Yeah, man. Thank you, guys. For tuning in tonight i'm happy i'm happy i'm so happy that we can continue to do this god has been faithful i still got stories to tell y'all but yeah man change is necessary yep i didn't say that but somebody caught it tonight thank you for your giving i'm about to get off of here if you want to give you want to be a blessing to the ministry my information is right at the top of uh of this video here all my zell my paper um my cash app is right there a blessing thank you so much i pray that god blesses you even if you've been a blessing to me um in this season god bless you guys so much i'm about to get off of here yeah people still people still commenting and i'm gonna get into the habit of reading all these comments and replying to them too yeah next time you come for bible study which i will tell you because i'm not too sure yet but it can happen every week, at least once a week. Make sure you bring somebody. Tell them, set aside these two hours here because we're going into the Word of God. We have to know God in a better way. Jesus has to be real to us. He can't be a fairy tale or a picture on a wall anymore. He has to be real. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Holy and Anointed One, the Seed of Abraham. Bless y'all.